Okay, Javier. So it's time to do a net, to do a deployment for Net Five in IIS. So on the series, like most of the deployments we have done lately, are basically either on Azure or Linux. So we kind of forgot on how to do them in IIS. So we're going to show that in this video. So here we have a sub solution is a Blazor application is targeting Net Five. And it's basically a file new project. Um, nothing special in here. We act, the actual actual the solution doesn't is not important. What is important is the settings on the IIS. So let me show you the IIS here, and let's create the site. So here I have a folder inside of the www root. Why? Because there you have all the permissions. So I create a folder called net five deploy. So let me copy this, and then let's go to IIS. And let's create a new site. Okay, so we're in IIS at the moment. Let me move this to the site. Okay, so before we do, before we create the site, the first thing that we need to do is to create an application pool. So uh, he, this is the tricky part. So this will be net by deploy pool. Here you have to select uh, no manage code. Um, basically, that's it. And then you have to change some uh, settings. So here we have the net five um, deploy pool. We go to the, we need to go to the bindings. So basic settings. Now let me make the screen bigger because this is here. Um, so the thing are these ones. Okay, and here you need to select just a few things. So in the identity, in this case, you're using um, application pool identity. And what you have to select is uh, the account under which the service is going to be running. So you can select any of these, but in this case, I will use it as network service. And basically that's it. So we have the application pool. Now let's create the site. So, Yes, I got it. Yeah. So it was going to here and at website. So the site name will be new net five deploy. The physical part we already have it is the one that we created before. And this is the tricky part. So 17, right? So I think it's that port is not used. And that's it. Let's see if we can create it. Yeah. So now we have the site. The site is running. Now let's make a deploy. So let me come here. Let's go to deployment. And this application we deployed before, I think. So let me check that we don't have any profile. Yeah, we don't have profiles. So let's publish this. We're going to publish to web server IIS. We're going to use web deploy. Okay, so the server name or IP. So this is. Okay, it's good to mention that in your channel, there is a video that covers how to install and configure and do all the implementation for web deploy. So you can do exactly this right kit publish directly to your site. Yeah, that's important because if you don't have it, there is no way to do it directly from the studio. So you have to have that on the IIS side. Yeah, and there is no difference to doing the deploy to the file system and then FTP of the all the files again through this uh, folder, but this make it so much easier. Yeah, I mean, usually you start like, I will deploy to the file system and then you copy and once you're tired of that, like really tired, you start with the web deploy. Mm -hmm. So the site name is the site, the name of the site on the IIS site. Uh, the URL, we will leave it empty so far because we don't have a domain for this uh, deployment. The username is the username of the OS. So, and then the password. And here this step is kind of important is like, um, you need to save password and then validate, but so you need to go back later, but let's finish here. And okay, let's edit the profile. So if you go back to connection, 
um, you're allowed to do this validate connection. Because sometimes the deployment fail because there is no way to validate the, the certificate. So you need to do it here. So, so far so good, everything's working. Uh, let's go and do a deployment. So the configuration will be released. The target will be net five. Here we can do self-contained, but when you do the um, publish options, uh, don't click uh, produce single file because it's not supported by IIS. You can do it in any other server, but not in IIS. Um, and we show how we use it on Linux. So yeah, that's so that, that was the first example actually. So then the target is, um, it can run on 32, but is win x64. And then save, and let's try to publish, and let's see if it works. So, so while that is publishing, it's good to mention that we have deployment of a SAF Blazor server to Linux. We have deployment of SAF Blazor server to Azure. Both are in a, or my channel or hosted channels. I'm not sure right now, but yeah. in both. I mean, uh, basically, this is the case that we used to use all the time before, like deploying to IIS, but. Funny as it is, we don't use it that much now. We're either on Azure or in Linux. So, but that's why we make this video because it's kind of easy to forget that you still have the AIS that are working. And um, funny as it is, it gives us some problems at the beginning, remember that. You know, like you forgot those little steps. So it's good to have a video for refreshing this. No, and while that files, why, why all those files are uploading, there is a, a few things to mention. Uh, you say first that the first thing we do was like deploy to the file system, then FTP. The second one we install with deploy, and then at some moment we do continuous deployment because, like, yeah, I mean, Hanselman say friends don't let friends do right click publish, right? <laughs> it yeah. is what it is. So, a few other things about the x64 in place or applications, every time that a component gets instantiated, that will be on memory for the whole time that a screen is presented. So of course we will definitely want to use 64 bits so we have a more memory available for us. So that's a really important thing. And we haven't done too much IIS because actually there is so much to gain about deploying Blazor server to Azure App Service that is a perfect fit. All the scalability, all the uh, sticky sessions, so everything gets taken care of from you right away. Like in 10 minutes configuration, you can have everything set up to a scale really uh, big. And, you can actually uh, take a look at the talk that we gave about hosting and scaling Blazor serving in the cloud so much so. I wonder Javier, if there is a way to do all that extra things that you get from Azure on IIS. So for example, you have like the sticky connections and all those settings. I guess it's possible to do them in IIS, but it's maybe not recommended, who knows? Uh, for me, the, the issue is simple in Azure, you have Azure Signal R service. You have how to scale to another instance basing on the metric of 70% of CPU, 70% of uh, memory. There is so much to gain to only have it there. And it's so simple to configure all those things that I can do all that configuration like in 20 minutes and you will have your app ready to handle like a crazy number, like 100,000 users. Yeah, to tell you the truth, like um, I used to kind of don't, um, don't think that Azure was a good solution, but the more time that passes, I think like if you are really focused on your productivity and not in the technical details, go to Azure is cheap enough to have something running there. Of course, you need to know how to manage the, the cost. And for that, you have a talk, right? You have a yeah. video, so about Azure check, cost that management. check that first, check that first. It's like really important. Yeah, don't leave something running if you're not using it. You're going to be surprised with a big bill. Okay, so the deployment is done. So let's go and check here. So let's see. Oh, we have it on this side. I, I guess we didn't show the app running, right? It's just a simple no. app with just one class. But let's see if it's running actually. So let me open here the browser. I hear, hear you, eh? Hear you? Yeah. Port 8017. Yeah, so the app is running. It's running in memory, right? I mean, we said everything in memory for the application. So let's see the one, test. We can save. So now you have a net five 
application running under IIS and is not managed actually um, from IIS. So basically the only tricks that you need to do is the application pool. You need to know how to set up the application pool. And when you create the site, make sure that you create the application pool before, because at that moment, there is no way to create it. You can pick one, but you cannot create one. So that's it. Everything, anything that you want to add, Javier? No, I think we covered all of everything Fine. that we wanted to show. Finally, we made this video. So <laughs> take care, guys, and see you guys on the next video. Bye.